So today I'm going to sit down and go through with you guys some future classics of the modern generation. When I say the modern generation, I mean my um, generation, the cars that we're going to grow up to love and to um, covet and just want and spend stupid amounts of money on. So here are some cars from a few different categories that I think will be future classics and will either go up in value massively or just never lose any money. So uh, let's get started. The first car I wanna start with is the W204 C63 AMG. This car is legendary amongst my age group, my demographic. It was a car that we used to aspire, we used to wanna drive, like we used to wanna experience. It had the naturally aspirated 6.2 liter Mercedes engine and it was, it was just a stunner. It sounded amazing. It was just one of those cars that just left an impact on everyone that saw one in real life and I think this is going to be a future classic. If you are going to get one I would recommend getting a clean as possible one as with all the cars on this list. Getting one that hasn't got any modifications and low mileage obviously. I think you need to make sure you also get one uh, this the facelifted version of the car uh, that was released later on in the car's life cycle and it has to have the performance pack with the limited slip differential. I think those two features are essential in order to make that car high demand going forwards in the future. I think it's a smart car to invest in and I think it's a smart car um, uh, to own because it's kind of like the last of his generation, the final naturally aspirated C63. Um, it had interesting driving dynamics, but I think the appeal was mostly in how aggressive and how over the top it was. Um, also, the, the form of the car that I would recommend, the ones that I think are gonna hold the value the most, the estate slash wagon version of the car. I think that one is gonna be really, really hot in the future. And obviously the coupe with the four door coming in last. I think the four door was great, but I think the appeal really, really struck with the coupe and the wagon version of the car. So yeah, uh, C63, a car that I love, a car that many people love, and a car that I think will be a future classic. You can pick one up around uh, later 20s for a really good example, where I say really good, a good enough example, and then it goes into the higher numbers once you start getting ones that are even cleaner. Obviously there's the 507 edition, which would be really appealing, but I'm trying to advise you on cars that I think that are affordable to buy now and you'll make money on later. So yeah, C63, that's my first one. Staying in the vein of German performance, German muscle cars, the next one I wanna say, in my personal opinion, is the F80 and the F82 BMW M3 and BMW M4. I think these cars are uh, introducing turbocharging into the M3 lineage, the first M4. I think they, they brought a new uh, philosophy when it came to the performance of those cars. And I think they were cars that were very, very appealing. Now, a lot of them have been driven hard and a lot of them have um, high mileage or modifications. Do you wanna find one, I think, that has, again, the bare amount of modifications, hardly any if possible, so zero mods. I think the one that's gonna hold value most is the convertible version of the car, the folding hardtop, which was a first for the uh, for that uh, lineage of cars. And then for the M3, you probably want as standard as possible. I'm not an expert on this generation of cars because I was never really a BMW enthusiast. I had a really bad experience with BMW once. It picked me off and now, as you guys know, I um, have had several BMWs, I love BMW, uh, but this generation is a car that I always wanted in for my uh, age group. And I think in the future, we're gonna grow up and be like, man, I really wanted that M3, I really wanted that M4, let me go back and buy one. Again, you can pick them up around the same price as the C63. It's not too bad. The performance is great on them. And uh, again, they, they, they um, handle very well. And I think it's gonna probably be the last M3 or the M4 that was like, a decent weight, they've gotten heavier with the new models and I think with them uh, introducing turbocharging and that usability between track focused and uh, daily driving uh, ability, I think that again, future classic for me, hey, again, I'm not an expert, so these are just my opinions. Alfa Romeo is another one, uh, the uh, Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio, Quadrifog anyway, the Alfa Romeo version of a C63 or their version of an M3 uh, was the four-door Giulia uh, Quadrifoglio, uh, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, the car was amazing. Uh, I, I feel like that car is underrated. It had a Ferrari-derived engine, so um, the Ferrari's V8 engine with two cylinders missing, giving it a 2.9-litre uh, V6, uh, plenty of power. It looked amazing, and I think out of the three, it was the most underrated, but probably, for me, 
uh, the most desirable. I think in the future it will be a classic just because of the sheer amount of performance it brought to the table. So that's another one to look out for. And finally, in uh, this uh, big like sedan or coupe uh, section of the list, Lexus LC500, a car that I've spoken about many times on my TikTok channel, a car that I've always loved and I've always wanted. I've never taken the plunge to get one. I think I might now. It's a great car, amazing naturally aspirated V8 sound. The performance necessary isn't there, but that's not what the car's about. It's more of a cruiser, more of a luxury car. So that is another car I think you should look out for. Again, I think it's very self-explanatory and I think it'll probably be the last uh, uh, V8 engine we see from Lexus. They're currently still in production. The 2024 model of the car has brought several updates. So I think any version of the car will be fine. The 2024 one is the most new and is the most updated, but I think any version will be fine. And I personally think that um, the Cabriolet won't do as good as the Coupe, but I'm not entirely sure again. Um, it's, all up to, it's all up to what uh, the market uh, wants in the future. Uh, so those are the big Coupes uh, sedans uh, the V8s, the inline sixes, those those are the, the the that section of the list. This next section is very short. I have expertise in uh, certain areas, and this next area isn't necessarily my expertise, but I can tell you what I think is going to be future classics in this area, and it'll be compact sports cars. So cars that people can run around in, cars that people wanted as teenagers, but never got around to getting, they're going to grow up and be like, oh, I never got this car that I really wanted, it's really cheap now, let me buy it. And then that's when you see prices creeping up. So I'm going to start with a BMW 1M. Um, it wasn't in production for long. I think this is going to be a very, very desirable car. It was kind of like an homage to the old school M cars, where it was lightweight and it still had the performance and it gave you that driving uh, experience. Again, limited production numbers on this car because it wasn't produced for that long. So I think this will be a good one to get. They're not too expensive right now. I think people will start clocking onto them and then the prices will start going up. So I think that if you're looking for a compact sports car, this is probably where to start on the list. Alternatively, you have things like the Toyota GR Yaris. Again, a very, very desirable car. The first generation I think will be uh, one that will be a classic, the second generation too. But the first generation you can pick up now for a decent price is interesting for me, where this car was so hyped up that the hype reached such a high level, they were going for over list, and then people started getting out of them and then selling them. Everyone's trying to flip it, the price has kind of tumbled. So now you can pick one up for a sensible price. So it's something that I would probably look into. And um, finally, the current generation Honda Civic Type R. Uh, I don't know much about this car, but I know that it's a car that has a lot of personality, uh, great performance, front wheel drive, and I think, again, another future classic, but with Honda Civics, I think when I say future classic, I don't think necessarily it's going to go up in value massively, but what I do think is it will be um, uh, very renowned amongst, you know, the scene in 10, 15 years. Uh, so you have cars like the Nissan Skyline GTR, you have the, uh, the Toyota Supra, uh, Honda NSX, loads of cars in the Japanese uh, segment that have gone on to become uh, classics and have gone up in price massively. And I think these are some of the next cars that are probably gonna be in that space that are gonna go up in value. So first one, Honda S2000. Um, the first time I ever saw this car was in the Fast and Furious. To me, it was one of like uh, the cars that were like underrated in that series. I think uh, it, it, they really hyped it up in there and the car, uh, obviously, with it being uh, naturally aspirated, a high revving VTEC engine, convertible, I think it will go up in value more than it already has done. I think it's been overlooked massively, so I think there's an opportunity there to purchase one at a sensible price and uh, not lose any money and, in fact, make money going forwards. But it, it will have to be a non-modified as clean as possible one. A lot of these Japanese cars do end up getting heavily modified. Similar to that, um, Subaru Impreza, um, they're all of, well, the various models. The most recent ones, um, uh, WRX, STI trims, I think those cars, if you can find one that hasn't been modified, you are going to be laughing in the future because uh, they, they seem to be like cult classics. You know, they have the um, history with um, Colin McRae racing in them. And then you have, uh, you know, it's the iconic livery uh, against the blue. I think this is probably gonna be a future classic. Um, I don't know anyone with one. I've seen one, but it was a Colin McRae edition, I believe. And apparently it was worth like 400 grand or, I, it was worth a ridiculous number. But um, yeah, future classic, as well as the Nissan 350 and 370Z. Um, these cars were released when I was young, when we were playing games like Need for Speed Underground, Midnight Club 3, Dub Edition. Uh, I think these cars are iconic amongst uh, my generation. And again, that symbolism of, you know, these uh, tunable cars 
will just be really appealing to future generations. So if you can find a clean one, uh, one that's neat, one that's tidy, I think that you're gonna be in for some good money. Uh, similar with the 300ZX, but that's a bit older, so I don't wanna to get too into that. Um, but that um, finishes off the Japanese sports cars. Again, like I said, I'm not an expert on Japanese sports cars, so I'm not gonna speak like I am. Sports cars in general uh, are always a tricky one because there's so many, but one that I think will definitely be a future classic is the Lotus Elise. Um, the first generation of those. I think uh, the car was synonymous, was synonymous with lightweight performance and uh, driving pleasure. It was a minimalist approach on a sports car. And I think it's one that's kind of been overlooked. I think Lotus as a brand historically has been overlooked in the recent years. But again, I think going forward, people are gonna be like, uh, oh, the Lotus Elise, that was a really hot car back in the day. I don't think it has the potential to be something that's really, really appealing uh, again for this generation when we're older. I, older is a horrible word. Uh, when it comes to luxury saloons, um, Mercedes CLS, I think the first, second generation cars were uh, incredible. The first one was an absolute styling revolution. For me, that four door coupe um, body style uh, was really started with the Mercedes CLS. And you can get a CLS 55 or any of the AMG variants. I think they will be future classics. Again, as clean as possible. If you can get a low mileage one now, they're pretty cheap at the moment. So you could pick one up for a decent price. And I think you won't be let down with how it looks and how it ages. Because I think that car has aged like fine wine. And then there's also the fifth generation Maserati Quattroporte, uh, the Maserati four door with a flat plane crank uh, V8. What is there not to love about that? It just sounds absolutely insane. And I think that's going to definitely be something that in the future we'll look back on. Um, controversial one, the first generation uh, Porsche Panamera. I think it might be a cult classic in the future. I think uh, now that they've gone down in price massively, more people are able to get into them and people are doing stuff to them uh, or, or younger people can buy them. I've had two when I was younger. They're great cars, but I think it has a potential to become a classic because it was like Porsche's uh, first attempt at that four door 911 uh, styling. It wasn't an SUV, it's very different. It's still in production now. And it has a, uh, a fan base. The Panamera does have a fan base, but I think Again, it has the potential to be a future classic. Although uh, many people said it looked very ugly, I like how the car looks, and I think it's a very Marmite car. For my American viewers, Marmite is a, uh, a spread that British people sometimes put on food, but it's like divided the nation 50-50. Not everyone likes it, uh, not everyone hates it. Probably want to get a, a GTS or a Turbo S uh, variant of the car. They were massively overpowered with the uh, Turbo S being rapid for a, a four-door car that uh, almost weigh two tons and then the GTS uh, bringing uh, that similar vibe, but this time uh, with a naturally aspirated V8 engine. Yeah, uh, Panamera GTS or a Turbo S of the first generation. Um, I think the uh, uh, chassis uh, number and model variant was 970. So that's probably what you're looking for. Uh, speaking of Porsche, there are many 911s we can go through. Um, I could sit here all day. I could have made this video entirely on 911s, but instead I'm gonna to talk to you about two 911s that I think are uh, ones that are gonna be future classic. Again, there are many, but I've got a, a strong belief that these two will definitely be future classic. So uh, the first one's the 996 generation 911. This car was um, not very loved by Porsche enthusiasts when it was released. Uh, it was the first water-cooled and CAD designed 911. So, um, Let's face it, Porsche guys tend to be older and traditionalist, so anything that changes, they kind of hate it. But this 911 um, was hated so much that I think it's going to become a classic because um, just being the first of that uh, uh, water cooled generation is also, again, CAD designed. It just brought something new to the table. And when things have been hated a lot, uh, they tend to be cheaper to buy. And when things are cheaper to buy, people tend to buy them. When people tend to buy them, it tends to drive the price up. So I think uh, the 996 generation and the 997 generation also, um, which return to the classic uh, 911 styling, there are many uh, variations that I think will be future classics, but I think those two are probably the most affordable ones that are probably gonna go up quite significantly and be quite renowned uh, amongst uh, uh, driving enthusiasts, car enthusiasts. I could have gone on all day about uh, 911s. You have GT3s, you have GT3 Tourings, not the current generation, the previous generation, uh, the original GT3 RS, there's GT2, GT2 RS, 
uh, there's so many but um yeah these are the i think these ones are a sensible price at the moment uh and again they'll go up in value in my opinion and i'm pretty sure i will put money on that personally um when it comes to supercars speaking of supercars gintani exhaust is going on my rualto and i've just got a, a message from gb performance he says should be here next week so look out for that video hopefully next week or the following week but um if you follow my channel if you follow me you probably know that i have a supercar issue i have a supercar problem i just love supercars so i've had a few supercars now um my supercar journey started very uh positively it started during uh that little illness that was going on in 2019 to 2021 and i managed to make a significant amount of money on buying and selling supercars so that's when i really delved into the supercar world so i'm now going to give you on what i think is my area of expertise supercars that are going to go up in value the first one i want to say this is you're probably not expecting me to say this um aston martin dps super Legera, um twin turbo v12 aston martin uh, four seats grand tour but still had that supercar dna it combined luxury and performance it sounds amazing i've driven one um it was it was a great car i loved it so much the entertainment wasn't gonna wasn't great but in the future no one's gonna care about that i think this car is going to be a classic because the design was so amazing i've never seen a car be so beautiful yet so aggressive at the same time it's a very difficult um line to tread and i think the stylist of the dbs super Legera really really hit it off on that one if I was looking for one, I would want it to be the, the Super Legera badged car because later on they stopped putting that badge on the car. They're, they made a lot of additions of it, so um, you're going to have a lot of choice. But I think the one you want to go for is Super Legera badged car or um, the final edition, which I think was called the 770. I can't remember off the top of my head, but that was like the refined version of the car with the bucket seats, the new bucket seats and everything. So I think one of those two cars are the ones you want to get. I would have bought one. I went to buy an 812 uh, super fast instead at the time. The reason was that for that was because um, I just wanted a Ferrari and it just seemed more appealing to me. Even though the Aston Martin was cheaper, I'm happy I went with the Ferrari in the end. Speaking of Ferrari, you'll probably think I'm going to say 812. I am not going to say 812. I think the front engine Ferrari, that's a future classic, aside from the 599, which we know is already kind of a classic at the moment, I think it's the Ferrari F12. Uh, that car was insane. It was literally... Uh, a monster uh naturally aspirated v12 sitting in front of you um super super aggressive styling and over over the top uh performance figures for what uh, the car was i think this car is very under appreciated at the moment you can get one for around 100 grand in the uk and i think if you yeah about 100 grand 120 100, around that area 100 to 130 let's say um i think if you get a low mileage example and you keep it this will be a car that one day will be worth a million whether that is in 10 20 30 years it'll be it'll be soon don't worry and then obviously you have the um, tdf version of the car will be worth even more they're already listed around a million in the uk so i think um that is a good ferrari to get into speaking of v12s lamborghini aventador pretty much any aventador but i think the one to go for is uh, the original shape um just because it was the original aventador um it was very sought after amongst my generation and then uh, also the Aventador SV and the S are two very important models the SV just because it was iconic with the wing uh, with the styling and it has like this cult following even though that cult following has been eaten into by the launch of the SVJ which again I think is another classic I think that one will go up in value I think the Aventador uh, SV and SVJ will be very interesting to say which one holds the most value going forwards. Surprisingly, I think probably the safest one to buy, in my personal opinion, would be the Aventador S in terms of spending the lease now and making profit later. The Aventador S, they didn't build that many, in fact. Um, it's one of the uh, less common uh, Aventadors. Uh, they're not, not numbered, if that makes sense. So I think that is probably one to get and it is a great balance because it pretty much gives you everything that SVJ has apart from the, obviously the active aero and the aggressive styling and the uh, uh, dual exit exhaust. But it has all the new software, it had four wheel steering, it was very usable. I had an Aventador S, um, I bought it for 250000 and I sold it uh, six months later for 255000 so I didn't lose any money on the car. I think the Aventador S is um, probably a, a cheap one. You're going to have the least amount of issues with compared to the regular original Aventador 
and it's going to be more fun to drive. So you can actually drive it and I think make money on it in the future. But again, I think that car is a 10 to 15 year car. Another controversial car, Maserati MC20. I've spoken about this on my TikTok a lot. That car is very underappreciated right now. Currently, you can get one for about 130K in the UK. Um, beautiful car, timeless design. Um, it has enough power. I think the brand name Maserati has really um, been a detriment to that car. Um, it's made it feel like a brand you can't trust, a brand you can't rely on. But personally, I think this car is stunning. And I would actually buy one if I didn't have too many supercars, just because the value for money is there. Similar to buying a McLaren 720S, you're getting so much bang for your buck. And I think the innovative uh, Natuno, Natuna engine with a um, pre-injection, uh, just, you know, it's going to make that car something that people can be like, why did we not respect this car when it was out? So I think, again, a future classic, and obviously they're not making loads of them because not people aren't buying loads of them. In that size area, uh, Ferrari F8 Tributo, very controversial. You probably thought I was going to say Pista or something, but the F8 Tributo uh, came out during this uh, global illness again. Not many people bought them and it was discontinued quite quickly. So I think it's going to be a very, very, very rare car going forward. If you can get one with, you know, Rosso Corsa, uh, beautiful interior, the right wheels, I think these cars will go up in price. They're kind of, they're more expensive than the 296 at the moment, which is incredible because 296 is more powerful and newer. Uh, so I think this is one to get. They are great cars. I've driven one before. It's just, it lacked a bit of the thrill that you would expect from a car that looks the way it looks. I was expecting more piece done. It was kind of more uh, 488, but just with a piece engine, it's hard to describe. I think this is one to definitely buy. And again, I'll put my money on this one. Your money's probably safe in the FA Tributo in the right spec. When it comes to, again, to that size, Lamborghini Huracan Performante, I think, is the sweet spot for the Hurricane. I think that is gonna be uh, renowned as the uh, the perfect Hurricane. Had the Nürburgring record, which also brings uh, its own merits for the car. Um, and again, it was a poster car for my generation. Uh, I remember when I was a bit younger before I had supercars, I always wanted a Hurricane Performante, and I managed to get one, and they are at a very good price right now. But the only issue is, because it's so good, people daily drive them and there's a lot of high mileage cars. So if you can get one that's sub 10 and keep it sub 10 for a while, I think your money's safe. Likewise, I think the Lamborghini Huracan Storato is also going to be a future classic and a caveat, not caveat, I'm attaching this on, the 911 Dakar. Um, these cars, the off-roading versions of performance slash supercars, I think will be looked back on and people will be like, that is ridiculous. And it'll just be one of those weird collector's cars that you see in like a weird museum in 10, 30 years maybe. Other cars to consider, this is not a supercar, and this is very controversial, because I'm not a fan of this car. BMW i8, I think, will be a future classic. Uh, carbon tub. Uh, the first venture into that world for BMW uh, of building like this kind of like supercar hybrid thing. They're very cheap right now. If you can get a low mileage one, future classic, just park it up and don't even drive it. I won't blame you. Skinny wheels, horrible engine, um, not great performance, but it is, I think that's going to be a future classic. Uh, I'm not a, an American car guy, um, but the C8 Corvette, again, I think it might be a future classic, but time will tell. Uh, and then you have, you know, the Ford GT, which is obviously uh, more of like in that hypercar realm because they've gone up in price already. Uh, I think these are some cars that I would say will be future classics. Another one, 675LT McLaren. Um, it was said to be the perfect McLaren. Uh, I've just written a list of random cars. Um, controversially, as an electric car, I think the Model S uh, performance, the P100D, the first one, or the P90D, I think they're going to be future classics if they are still working in the future. You probably will disagree with me on that. I'd like to see the comments below. A Lamborghini Urus is another one I wrote down. I think the Lamborghini Urus, if you can get like a first generation one that's clean, but that's gonna be, that is gonna be a long haul. So don't, don't necessarily do that right now. Uh, I also wrote down Jaguar F-Type, the V8 variant of the car. Sounds insane, and I think it was a really turning point for Jaguar. Uh, although they've kind of gone back now and cancelled it, and like they're rebranding, I think that has the potential to be a future classic. Rolls-Royce Wraith. Uh, yeah, I think from my opinion, obviously there's cars that I miss, but these are cars that I feel like I'm 
somewhat knowledgeable on and cards that I think are somewhat attainable at the moment because I could say things like 918, Pagani Huayra, all these other cards but obviously they're going to be future classics. I think the 918 is very cheap right now, that's why I'm buying one because you can get one for about a million now and I think that is a three million pound car in the coming years. I've got some very interesting stuff coming next week, some new cars that are coming and I will be testing as well so look out for that. I'm going to buy one of the cars on this list and I think for me it'll be the C63. I always wanted one, they are very cheap right now so I think I'm going to buy one literally put it on parking pads, make sure it's in perfect condition obviously, and park it up in a warehouse and only like turn it on once a month or something. So please drop down below what cars you think will be future classics. Um, your car at the moment and if you think it will be a future classic as well, that would be quite interesting. I really really love that you guys have stayed in tune with the channel and the channel's growing and it's growing with you guys. I've got a lot coming up and I've got a lot of things for you guys as well. Uh, the opportunity to get some amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. If you made it this far into the video, uh, just please comment sour apples. Comment sour apples and uh, in my next video, I'll pick one of you guys that commented sour apples and I will give you something really nice that you will appreciate, hopefully. It's not competition though, I'm just being nice. So uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you for tuning into the channel and I will see you uh, in a few days with a little surprise. Peace.